What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Sandy Alcantara, who had three Ks and six innings, giving up two earned runs. He had this nasty 89-mile-an-hour slider, this changeup, as well as this painted 98-mile-an-hour fastball. Those numbers aren't eye-popping, but he did this at Coors Field, so it's really an efficient outing. Zach Greinke had five Ks in five innings, giving up one earned run. Thanks to his slow curveballs, his fastball, this nearly painted two-seamer, as well as this 87-mile-an-hour changeup that's nearly the speed of his best heater. He faced Matthew Boyd, who had six Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up one run, and had this absolutely disgusting back foot slider. Maybe we should call that slider Duke Ellington, because it gets you to move your feet and swing at the same time. Sorry, that is a total dad joke. I apologize. Adrian Hauser had three Ks in five and a third scoreless innings, thanks to his sinkers, and he faced Brandon Belak, who had these nasty change-ups on his way to three strikeouts in six and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs. Bryce Elder had another great outing with six Ks in six innings, giving up only one earned run. He had this sinker that's not painted but got the call. We're cool with that, especially because I live in Atlanta. But the real story of the game for Bryce were these filthy sliders. He got a White Castle special on his slider. You remember, that's three disgusting sliders in a row to get a K. Maybe I should put on my marketing cap and call them three delicious sliders in a row so White Castle sponsors this. Elder outdueled Tony Gonsolin, who had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, but gave up three earned runs. He had this dirty splitter and his 95-mile-an-hour fastball and had this slider fastball mix that I overlaid, and you can see how long those pitches tunnel and what makes them so hard to hit, because they end up veering off in different directions. Nasty Nestor Cortez was nasty for a while yesterday. He had these fastballs and sweeper. He had five Ks in six innings, but ended up giving up four earned runs, and has a 5.3 ERA this year. And this has me scratching my head. Were the last two years a fluke for Nestor, and now he's regressing to his mean, or is this year the fluke, and the last two years were the real Nestor? Give me your thoughts in the comments. Nestor faced Tyler Wells, who had eight Ks in five innings, giving up five runs, and had this elevated fastball and slider. Trevor Williams had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs, and relied on this nasty sinker and slider mix. He battled Ryan Weathers, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up four earned runs, and had this changeup and fastball. Ben Lively had 8 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and relied on his sliders and fastballs. His ERA this year is now 2.65. This is Lively's second solid start in a row, and he did a really good job of mixing pitches. Tyler Anderson had this K and strike him out, throw him out, stealing home double play. Not something you see every day. And he had 3 Ks in 6 innings, giving up only one earned run. He faced James Paxton, who had these cutters, and had five Ks in three innings, but gave up five earned runs. Martin Perez relied on his change-ups and sinkers, and had three Ks in seven innings, giving up two earned runs. He faced off against Johan Oviedo, who had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs, but got this back foot slider and sword, and then threw in an immaculate inning. Immaculate innings have to be one of my favorite things. Sheer dominance. Oh, two. Got him. Got him, Immaculate. Zach Gallen had three Ks in five and two-thirds innings, thanks to his knuckle curves. He did give up two earned runs. Anthony Disclafani had this wicked front door two-seamer that Kirloff said, it's not a strike. That's not a strike. That's not a strike. Well, spoiler alert, it was a strike. Disclafani ended up with six Ks in five innings, giving up four earned runs. He faced Joe Ryan, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up only one earned run, and was solid again, really mostly relying on his fastball. Kodai Senga had six Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had his spooky ghost forks, 
as well as his 96-mile-an-hour fastball. And he faced Marcus Stroman, who had three Ks in eight innings, giving up only two runs, thanks to his slider, sinker, and cutter, and got this huge double play after being left in the game in the eighth inning. And look at Stroke get fired up. I love the emotion. Bryce Miller was dominant yet again. He had six strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two hits and no runs. He, of course, relied on his overpowering fastball and had these K-struts. He threw this cheese at the knees, painted with his fastball. It's just an electric pitch. Miller's fastball is a bit of a unicorn pitch. It fights gravity more than any other starter's fastball in baseball, besting the average fastball by over three inches, making it really hard to square up. And he doesn't have to throw it at the top of the zone to be effective. He can throw it at the knees, and a hitter's bound to take it because the hitter expects that that fastball will drop out of the strike zone, but it ends up catching it. Miller also worked in some sliders and got a sword on one. With this outing, Miller became the first pitcher since at least 1901 to go six innings and allow four hits or fewer in his first five career starts. That stat from the great Sarah Langs. This stat from the great Rob Friedman, he also helped me win my parlay yesterday. And good news, Bryce Miller will be my next interview, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. Yusei Kikuchi had these 91 and 92 mile an hour sliders and his curveball and K-strut. They have five Ks in five innings, but gave up five earned runs. He battled Shane McClanahan, who was brilliant yet again. McClanahan had seven Ks in seven innings, giving up only one earned run and no walks. He, of course, had his upper 90s fastball, but his changeup has quickly become one of my favorite pitches in baseball. And look at this bowel-locking one that he threw right down the middle. When you can lock up a hitter on a changeup right down the dick, that is impressive. McClanahan also featured these dirty curveballs. Sugar Shane now has the second lowest ERA in baseball at 1.97 and is the favorite to win the AL Cy Young Award at FanDuel Sportsbook. And that seems right to me, because he seems like the best pitcher in the American League right now. Here's an overlay of McClanahan's fastball and changeup, and you can really see how the velo difference and movement gets a swing and miss. But my filthiest starting pitcher of the day yesterday was Michael Kopech. Kopech had nine Ks in seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. His fastball was absolutely overpowering. Look at this, just blowing hitters away. And then he threw in some nasty sliders. But the biggest change he's made is he threw his change up 14 times this game to keep hitters off his fastball and make it play like it should. While reducing the amount of curveballs he threw, he only threw one curveball. Usually he throws about 8% curveballs and only 5% changeups. He also pitched with a ton of confidence and a confident Kopech is tough to deal with. Kopech has now given up four total hits in his last three games. He's on quite a roll. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Ken Waldachuk had these nasty sweepers. Will Smith had this wicked slider. Jimmy Lambert had this hammer curveball. Mark Leiter Jr. had this dead zone cutter. Nate Pearson had this beautiful curveball. Reynaldo Lopez had this dirty slider. Tanner Scott K'd the side and had this amazing hit-by-pitch slider that got the swing and miss for the K, adding injury to insult. Ryan Walker had three Ks thanks to this amazing crossfire delivery. Here's a home plate view of his unique mechanics. He kind of looks like he's going to throw it into the dugout and then delivers it straight to the plate. I think this would scare the crap out of me as a hitter. Giovanni Moran had these change-ups. Colin Holderman had this sick 100-mile-an-hour front-door two-seamer. He continues to be very good this year. But my filthiest reliever of the day, filthiest pitcher of the day, and probably filthiest pitcher of the year was Joan Duran. Oh, my freaking God. This was incredible. Not only did he hit 105 miles an hour this game, well, actually 104.6, but we round up here in Pitching Ninja Land. But that was the least of it. 
he put on an incredible display of disgusting stuff. Check out this 100.3 mile an hour splinker. This is a pitch at over 100 miles an hour that moves like that. There is nobody that has played this game on God's green earth that could hit this pitch. And then he unleashes a painted 104 mile an hour fastball and an unfair 90 mile an hour curveball. I did an overlay of this sequence with and without tails and when all is said and done at the end of the year, this is more than likely to be the most dominant at bat of the year because this is one of the most dominant bats I have ever seen. And as you know, I watch a lot of pitching. This is a pitching ninja dream and a hitter's nightmare. As you know, I interviewed Sonny Gray recently, and here's what Sonny had to say about Duran. What is like it watching a guy that can throw that freaking hard and can throw a splitter at 100 miles an hour? Yeah, his curveball is 92. His curveball yeah. is, is, I mean, to me, it's his best pitch. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's, um, man, it's fun. It's fun to watch him. It, it's really fun. It's it's fun to watch him. He goes about it the right way, too. Um, I like his little player. skip after he K's somebody, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, has a, he's a, he got some swag to him. Um, he's, he's, he's really fun to watch. He's, he's, he's consistent, too, like, consistent in what he does from being that young and for having the success that he's had, like he's, he's, he's incredibly consistent with what he does, um, you know, every day. So he's, he's, he's really fun to watch. And when he, and when he gets going, it's just like, I mean, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of people in baseball that can do it. I mean, if any, that can really do what he does. It's, um, it's, it's more than impressive to watch. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Does Di Sclafani get to eject the umpire after this? What is up, everybody? I have some great news for you today. Today is a 50% Pitching Ninja Profit Boost token day at FanDuel. I would use my Profit Boost token to take Logan Gilbert for 9Ks or more against the Oakland A's today. As for my parlay of the day, I'm gonna go with a three-leg parlay Take Kyle Freeland for 4Ks or more, then take Lucas Giolito for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Logan Gilbert for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?